on the line right now, Luca Turilli, and he's going to explain all about the new Turilli Leon Rhapsody project and upcoming Australian tour. Luca, thanks for taking my call. Ah, it's my pleasure, really. It's great to have you on the line. Can I get you to sum up your involvement and Fabio's involvement with Rhapsody over the years, how it went its separate ways, how it's come back together for you guys? Can you explain that quickly for us? Yeah, absolutely. Quickly is a difficult task, that's for sure. But I will try to be as short as I can. Um, well, you know, okay, now, uh, of course, everybody knows that uh, we started, uh, we released our first album, Le- Legendary Tales, in 1997. And... Um, we decided to create this uh, huge saga concept connecting many albums and all that. When the saga ended, after 10 full-length albums, in reality, 8 full-length albums and 2 EPs, uh, we decided to part ways because at the time, you know, after 10 albums, I think uh, it was the, the one of the greatest artistic projects uh, ever, no? I don't know many bands who work on something with such, uh, with such uh, <laughs> um, incredible, with such perspective. So uh, it was at that time, 2010 already, we released the, the last chapter of uh, the saga, corresponding to the album From Chaos to Eternity. And, uh, and then uh, when the saga ended, of course, it was, it was kind of natural, no? Uh, after such a long time to, 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 to feel the, the necessity to, to start a new artistic adventure because you search for new stimulation. You, know, you can, you know, whatever job you are doing in your life uh, after 10 years uh, of even 15 years, sorry, 15 years almost, then you feel the need to, to, um, to try something different. So we did that. Uh, but at the time, only I left. I, Dominique, and Patrice, they followed me. So, let's say three members of the old Rhapsody then became Rhapsody of Fire just because of legal problems. But it was essentially the same band. Um, so then, uh, when uh, there was the split, after the split, uh, I created Luca Turilli's uh, Rhapsody. And uh, I released just the two albums uh, with them. Um, and for me it was an, an incredible artistic goal because with the last album Prometheus uh, Symphonia Inis Divinus I reached uh, the top in the sense that I had this incredible collaboration with uh, Dolby and uh, Yamaha and, uh, and thanks to them uh, I realized uh, this dream of having the first album in music history uh, remixed in Dolby Atmos, no? And so it was even used uh, by, by Yamaha and Dolby to promote such new incredible uh, technology, which is uh, Dolby Atmos, of course, uh, in all the world. So it was just amazing, no? After that, you know, <laughs> uh, I was even thinking to leave metal, honestly, uh, to dedicate myself to other projects like symphonic rock projects because you have to know that uh, one of my favorite bands uh, is uh, is Muse. I love Muse, the English band, and uh, I wanted to make something in that style, connecting classical music with uh, Queen, uh, something like that, uh, things like that. But what happened? It happened that there was this chance, and of course, at the, sorry, at the same time, Fabio was simply going on with Rhapsody of Fire, no? Uh, and then it came this moment, uh, totally unexpected. Uh, you know, the managers, they spoke, ah, you, you should do um, still something together like this. Uh, what about a, a reunion like this? Uh, you know, because of course, with the new project, it's not that we were selling the same copies that we were selling before in the early years. Uh, when we started the Rhapsody Adventure, where, or, or when also the market was very different, to be honest, no? So, in the budget, especially the music budgets to, to record in the studio were very different. But uh, let's say that uh, at the time, you know, the manager was starting asking us, oh, why we don't make something big again? And now you look, you reached your goal, you have this incredible uh, artistic goal reached. So now you could think to, to connect back with Fabio and so on. Me, I said, I don't know, I'm not that sure, and so on. But it happened that then, 
one evening I was reflecting and I was thinking that uh, when I was contacted by the managers, it was 2016. And so I thought, wow, if uh, we make start this reunion thing next year, it will correspond to the 20th, 20th anniversary of the band. So uh, I contacted uh, Fabio telling this, and of course he loved immediately the idea. Then I contacted Alex Taropoli, but uh, he preferred not. Uh, because he just released uh, uh, f- the first album. Uh, uh, because at the same time, some months before, Fabio left Rhapsody of Fire and also Alex Oldfar, the drummer. So, uh, but this was really a kind of casualty, you know, this has nothing to do with the reunion or not. So, uh, because we were speaking already before when Fabio was still in, in Rhapsody, you know, we were speaking about this reunion with him and with Alex Staropoli. But then it happened all this. So let's say there was the, 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 the possibility for me and Fabio to be uh, again on tour. And um, even if Alex didn't want and uh, Alex Taropoli, of course. And, um, and so we said, OK, let's let's make something. But really uh, presenting it as a, I anyway wanted to, to leave metal. Fabio also wanted to do other things after he left Rhapsody of Fire. So we say, OK, but we we do this, but we make it for just a season of festivals. We were, we were planning just to play a few summer festivals. And uh, we present this really like a farewell tour. So that's why we called it the 20th anniversary reunion and uh, farewell tour. Really because we wanted to close the sar- circle in that way. Circle in that way. Uh, playing some of the old hits on stage for the very last time. And uh, so that was the plan. Then the, the success was huge. The success was huge. And uh, from six, seven festivals we were supposed to play in the very first minute. Then we arrived to play uh, for almost two years around the world, uh, over 70 shows uh, and all that. So it was uh, totally unexpected. Um, but still, after this, we wanted really, okay, we said now we were two years around the world, basta. Now we promised to the fans this were the last time, this was the last time, because this was the promotion was also based on this. The fact we will, we will play for the last time this very famous all the hits uh, of the band. And uh, then after some months, when I was already working on other things, you know, the promoters, oh, the tour was so successful, you should go on like that. So me, Fabio said, no way. We said, no way, because uh, it was a farewell tour. We don't want to make like uh, half of the bands out there that promise something they don't keep, no, just for money or things like that. But then, and to make it short, because otherwise I would speak for two hours, <laughs> just to explain you all this, to make it short, uh, we said, okay, you know, we can reach a compromise that make Fabio, that gives really the perfect stimulation, artistic stimulation to me and Fabio. Promoters are happy. We are all happy. So at first we had a different project to start with a new band called Zero Gravity. Always playing metal in the, let's say, a kind of evolution of Rhapsody, but called Zero Gravity, really to, to, to state that we were something different, new. We wanted to do something else. But then the, the promoters told, no, like this is just impossible for you uh, even to start because, the, of course, the, the offer you can imagine, my friend, were impossible, no? It was like to start, uh, to restart from zero. And this was just not, not possible for us, no? So we reached this kind of compromise. We, we put our name to really Leone Rhapsody on top of the name. Me, I stopped. Uh, definitely Luca to release Rhapsody. So this is already something removing some uh, complications, some confusion <laughs> from the table, as you can imagine. And, uh, and so now the situation is very clear. We call the album Zero Gravity. Uh, the undertitle is very clear. It's a statement in some way. It's our motto. Uh, re- rebirth and Evolution. Rebirth and evolution means everything. So what we have in mind with this new band. Uh, so in some way now, it's very clear for, for everybody now, or now at least in some months from now when the album will be released, uh, everything will be clear from the fans because now there's no look at release Rhapsody making something between. Now there is 
an old Rhapsody of Fire band playing the, the same uh, style of music uh, we were playing 20 years ago, and there is our band that wants to move to new direction, uh, we want to really to 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 have new artistic ch- a new artistic go for a new artistic challenge. So that that will be very clear because there is space for both bands. Uh, no one is invading the other field, and it will be very 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 clear. Tell us about the recording process quickly. I mean, you listen to this album and it sounds big. It sounds like huge and. You might say Queen is conjured up in the mind, like you were mentioning before. It's a very epic album. Tell us about the making of this. Well, it was a, it was a tough challenge because, uh, you, you know, just something like eight months ago, we didn't even know that we would have released this album. So you can imagine that since we, we agreed uh, to move in this direction and me and Fabio felt really in the position to say, yeah, we want it because now the situation is the one we, we want to go for. Um, then from that moment, okay, everything was, became really hectic. So thanks to God, I had uh, fr- the three songs on which I was working for another pro- project that were really, anyway, you know, it's always me as composer. So in some way, I, I could rearrange these three songs and they became some songs of the new album. And so this saved us and we were able to respect the, the incredible deadline that we had this time for recording, for, for the production in general. Because uh, there were already some uh, festivals uh, soon, uh, immediately fixed for July. Uh, you know, we entered the studio in December, so we had the, uh, to have the album out in time for the festival. So it was uh, really terrible. I found myself, this was the terrible, most terrible production in my life. And uh, normally all the production were, were tough. But in this one, I remember I bet, uh, I bet um, my record of uh, staying awake for three consecutive nights. Uh, during the mix of the album, so believe me, my friend, was was tragic, and uh, but 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 it was really was amazing, was amazing because it was the first time we were stu- uh, recording in a different studio that was um, not located in Germany because until now we always recorded in Germany. Uh, we recorded in San Marino, which is a small, small, small country in the middle of Italy, but it is a real country. It's not a town. Uh, and so in this, in this place, we recorded the album and uh, we found this engineer for the first time I was working with it. I was scared because, you know, Fabio and I are the producer, but you never know which kind of uh, uh, recording uh, surprises you can have, no, when you work uh, with a new studio. But everything was really smooth uh, and went uh, work really great. My favorite tracks are DNA, Multidimensional and I Am. Tell me about them. Well, yes, yes, of, of course. For me and Fabio, I Am is one of the favorite songs because it really presents the new face of Rhapsody. So you have the typical symphonic impact. This is the kind of trademark, I would say, of Rhapsody uh, because we come from classical music, of course, no, especially me, the composer, like I'm coming from classical music. So even if I would write a pop project, I, there would be some symphonic touch into it so it's just like that and so of course you have this connection between symphonic we have some new for the first time ever some progressive elements i would say Aya dream theater or thing or bands like that um and so uh, and in this spe- specific song we have uh, a special guest uh, he's uh, mark basile uh, he's performing a duet together with Fabio on this song. He's the singer of uh, DGM, the Italian band DGM. Uh, by the way, our engineer in the studio was the guitar player of this band, uh, that is, which is one of the most undervaluated progressive metal bands we have uh, in Italy, metal progressive bands, of course. And um, so, yes, it was just uh, when I discovered uh, about the singer, I said, wow, he has to perform a duet together with Fabio. And so, yes, I really love uh, also, as you say, there is this typical uh, queen uh, influence that will become fundamental, let's say, for this band. Also, because you have to know that uh, one of the options after we finish uh, the the farewell tour uh, was uh, for me and Fabio 
to proceed to, to, to create a, a rock symphonic project in the style of Queen. So it was natural that when we, the, we agreed to move on as uh, Luca Turilli Rhapsody, we implemented in some way this uh, typical Queen uh, uh, vocal arrangement that we love so much in our music. So this will be a main component, uh, even more in the, in, in the future albums. Um, and then uh, we have a song like DNA, where we have the other uh, second uh, special guest of the album. And I love it especially because uh, the lyrics are really interesting. And uh, I wanted really to speak, uh, you know, one of my maestros are, is, uh, is uh, Carl Gustav Jung, the famous psychologue. Uh, and uh, I speak in this song about the, the theory uh, of projection in psychoanalysis, no? So based, based the theory based on which uh, we tend to project on another person the negative side we are not able to accept as, be, as being a part of ourselves. So um, this is a very interesting matter, no? I love this stuff. And, uh, and so it was great to have on this song a duet, another duet, but this time between Fabio and uh, Elise Reed. Uh, she's the singer of the band uh, Amarant. Yes, I've spoken to her. She's a lovely girl. Ah, I love her. And, uh, and yes, we found that the combination of the two voices is just magic. And uh, really, we have this representation of the subject uh, uh, of the lyrics, so we have uh, Fabio representing this dark side, and uh, of course Elise, <laughs> the most angelic side of our personality. So yes, uh, another song that uh, we love for sure. And then of course there is already, I would say, a lot of variety in general. And this, you know what? After 20 years, as I told you, know when uh, you have a job, you work for 10 years or 20 or 15, then you feel you, you need some stimulations. In our case. Such stimulation is guaranteed by the variety. The variety for us is very important. And uh, in this case, for these bands, apart from the Queen uh, uh, vocal uh, style of uh, arrangement, we really went for these progressive uh, elements. Then we wanted to have for the first time some low-tuned, heavy guitars that we never had until now. Uh, as we love this kind of new modern productions, we really wanted, me and Fabio, to have... Uh, this in the new for the new band, and uh, and then uh, we have also this uh, ethnic uh, touch uh, that is replace, repl re replacing a little bit the folklore that we had in the in the old uh, rhapsody bands, um, and so now with this ethnic emotional impact, the, for me is really important. You know, I'm practicing yoga, meditation, so I'm very close to this kind of sounds. Uh, very really touching your heart and soul. Uh, I really love them. They really make me cry, things like that. So I really wanted to incorporate also this uh, element in our music. So I think that a little bit of this, of that, is is creating a special formula that is at the base of the new Rhapsody band. That's why this album for us is very important. Also Zero Gravity, you know, Everything is about the subject of spiritual evolution. Zero gravity, as you can imagine, represents also what we have on the, represented graphically on the main artwork. We have this phoenix uh, and the same subject we speak also in the song uh, multidimensional or the code in the multiverse or phoenix rising. We have this phoenix rising from the ashes of this technological uh, uh, universe uh, which repre represents the material aspect of life. So the phoenix is representing really the higher self um, in every one of us, trying to reach, in, trying to reach a higher level of uh, consciousness. So everything is basically about all that. We were speaking about these things even before with the old rhapsody, just that before everything was filtered by a heroic uh, fantasy saga. Now we speak about all this uh, in a more uh, direct way. Just uh, that's the only difference. Now, the album will be out very early in July, and then later on in the year in October, you're coming down to Australia to do three shows uh, in Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne. You must be looking forward to that. Uh, you imagine that uh, 
that uh, it was always my dream to come over there just simply because uh, me I'm a, a lover of uh, of nature so I know what there is you know I was already in New Zealand but only in New Zealand and never in Australia so for me it's something incredible just the fact to come there <laughs> to your country then to play some music uh, I like to play then it's something uh, additional on top but already for all of us the fact just to come there is something incredible. I cannot believe that we had to wait for 20 years just before before coming over there. Luca Torelli, thanks for talking to me about the new Torelli Leon Rhapsody album, which is called Zero Gravity, Rebirth and Evolution. That'll be out early July. Looking forward to seeing you in Australia in October. Thanks so much again for your time. Thank you, my friend. It was a pleasure. I invite all our fans really to those uh, shows because uh, we need to share some positive energy together, really. Thanks, Luca. Good luck with it all, and uh, thanks again for talking to me. Thank you, my friend.